Welcome back. We are going to the place called the Cello, an exhibition called Horizon, Landscape and Beyond. Pretty important and interesting exhibition featuring a range of contemporary artists, all focusing on the ever-present human relationship with the idea of horizons and landscapes portrayed throughout the centuries pretty important as it describes the current time of re-entering the unobstructed um, societal fabric where we can once again explore, look into the unknown, into the horizons, ex explore art, explore everything that comes with new horizons. Um, yeah, I'm pretty excited for it. I hope you enjoy it. Um, I hope you'll find the beauty in the horizons and depicted by our artists. Enjoy! So we are here with Alexander Hinks and the exhibition called Horizon, Landscape and Beyond. Yeah, and so we will have like a small walkthrough and uh, talk about some of the artworks and the overall exhibition area and how it's all playing out and yeah. So uh, thank you Matthew for coming around, so there's a great to sort of share the show with you. So, uh, yeah. And so there's 23 artists, 48 works, sort of more works and show here that I've ever done before. Yeah. I was scratching my head when I was painting this wall here, but I think I just about pulled it off. Mm. Uh, I think sort of the start of the original inspiration for the show is this piece here, which is one of my paintings. And so I've called it Atmosphere Falling. And with this piece, I had it sitting in my studio for two years. And I loved the background so much, I just didn't know what to do with it. I didn't want to mess it up. So well, the background of this, of this the painting? Exactly, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so this flow here and up there, I just did like that for a couple of years. And then I've just done this structure, which I envisioned being clouds in the last month or so. And I envisioned it as a landscape because you have sort of this area that watched over the international this is the sky. And so I thought, yeah, why not do a landscape show? Mm. And so as I'm an abstract artist, the sort of I know I pushed it in sort of the whole spectrum of landscape. And so you had it's all I think sort of more sort of typical sort of landscape. So here we have sort of a natural dowels sort of um, ocean piece. Yeah, so then good. it's again set against showing wards or sort of, uh, sort of digital collage here. Yeah. So there's some absolutely wonderful pieces. I love, I love the perspectives and the horizons yeah. on this particular yeah. one as well. As you go closer, it's like never ending yeah. uh, zoom experience. You can maybe zoom into this, this piece, it's beautiful. And she's also, you know, notice that she'll rework it, sort of. Uh, and uh, you know, I was speaking to one of the artists that's also known, known her for many years, and her, her practice has evolved over the years so much. And so the, it's unrecognisable than from what she'd be doing 20 years or so ago. So. Mm. Nice. Could you tell us a little bit more about the... Uh, so this piece is called Solar Storm. Solar Storm. It was also a, like, spanning through, through time. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess so, yeah. So all, all of my works are kind of deals with the sublime and mm. sort of, um, and like, sort of, it's all about contrast. And so it's setting something maybe natural against technological, sort of the hard edge straight line against the curve. Um, How did you get to the kind of... Uh, being inspired by the technological aspects of. I think I've heard, I think I've sort of maybe like going to New York and seeing like the skyscrapers and sort of these like hard edge structures. Yeah. Sort of, uh, the time but then also, like, I grew up in Kent in the countryside, I love a bit of nature, so yeah. Uh, so yeah, so it's a reflection of myself as well. Obviously. And then, so what I've done here is I've mirrored the same flow, yeah. but I've chosen like some beautiful sunset colours. But then I've also made like the clouds and the, the land very grey and dark, and yeah. you know, as if a big storm is about to happen. <laughs> was it meant to have this kind of almost out of space type of feel? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. It's, so, it's very kind of yeah. transcending the not 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 just the landscape of, of Earth, but also like beyond. Yeah. Well, yeah. There's a little, well, yeah. In the title of the show, it's yeah, landscape and beyond. Yeah. So my works are definitely beyond part. Yeah. <laughs> Apart from I do well to have my holiday area up like there with uh, my first uh, sort of plane photograph and yeah. sort of assessed it against Kirsty's palm trees or sort of area. And can we maybe go upstairs? Yeah, yeah of course you can. Yeah, so it's also from the mezzanine, you have some lovely sort of perspectives of the show and you can sort of see things from different angles. And... 
So the landscape piece uh, by David Wiseman, and so we're, we're both members of the London group, and so he's a lovely guy. Uh, I was chatting with Stephen Chambers, and he said that in this show, there's two artists which used to be his students, which is uh, Caroline List and Joanna Whittle, and then there's also one artist, David Wiseman, who used to be his tutor, mm. and so it's a small world. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, and for Herdita Sinclair, sort of uh, like a wave, but it's all very quirky with this sort of like hard edge structure set against it. Uh, Benjamin Deacon, sort of absolutely stunning paintings. Uh, so sort of, he's always quite quirky too. So sort of his his latest piece, uh, sort of is like these mountains, but it has like a colourful deck chair in the forefront. Are there other pieces by by him somewhere here? There's a bigger one down there. Yeah, sort of, uh, trying to feel the yeah. same uh, style. Yeah, it's, just, you know, it's a very quirky world there where you see sort of like the Himalaya mountains in the background, but it's actually set on a canvas. Oh, actually, I'm looking at the far, like the distance, so nicely coming all together, like the uh, surreal aspect of it. Yeah, completely, yeah. So it's, it's very playful, sort of, yeah. And here, I mean, this yeah. is more... It's, it's, this is more your typical landscape, but then also it's, this palette of colours is wonderful, yeah. and so sort of, I know throughout the show I found these little connections, sort of, yeah. uh, whether it be sort of colour, concept, or form, sort of. Uh, uh, these are stunning. So this is Sue Williams A Courts, and so beautifully drawn pencil, gold leaf edge. So much uh, effort put into this. Yeah, well, yeah, it's lovely when things come together, though. Yeah. So, yeah. And so uh, Natalie Dowles, and so, so these are mountains, but it's also fabric cloth, mm -hmm. and these. She's only just started this series of work, so these are brand new and probably never been exhibited before, sort of. Uh, yeah. Holiday area, so sort of a Kirsty Harris, and sort of she usually paints sort of like nuclear bomb clouds, mm. uh, but it was uh, quite nice for her to exhibit this sort of palm tree piece, and that's set against the photograph I took on my flight home from Tenerife recently, and I used this for the poster of the show, and yeah, an extremely fitting piece. Yeah. This was me out in Bermondsey uh, sort of last month, and uh, no, it's a very it's picturesque. It's so close to this uh, pub. Yes, know. exactly, the uh, Samuel Smith pub. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and, all, and then we were then further down to a very famous pub, sort of uh, the really old one. The, the yeah, I've, I've escaped me at the minute. So, oh, yeah. yeah. The Mayor, oh, no, yeah, so, yeah, it doesn't matter. Mayflower? <laughs> Mayf Mayflower, Mayflower, the Mayflower, yeah, yeah that's it, yeah. Um, Alice Wilson's, and so again, this is from like Dungeness Beach but it's beautifully sort of done onto woods and sort of, she's sort of removing the subject matter, sort of, which isn't so clear with this piece here, but downstairs you can make out the chimneys of a house that's been removed from the image and so, sort of, and then like a lovely finish too. Um, Adam King, so this is a collage of cassette tapes and sort of DVDs. It's a very playful piece. So he has the, the little tree in the foyer of the gallery that welcomes everyone to the show. Mm. So, uh, uh, Darren Nisbet, and so this is all print, uh, but then he's also sort of put it onto aluminium and scratched into it, and so we have very vibrant colours. Uh, Peter Lamb, he's got the big piece at the end there, which is absolutely wonderful. So, uh, but then, I've never seen a like this before, like the cool and missing. So. This one is like a, yeah, actually, yeah. it's a. Yeah. So he's, he's considering all the different elements of the world, all sort of. And so it's, it's lovely how it's all sort of peeling off and sort of that. Uh, Does it always work with kind of um, collages and... Um, yeah, so he has like a huge industrial printer in his studio. Mm, and sort yeah, of, that helps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and here's a piece by Anne Grimm, and so I, I hung this on the mezzanine because it forces the viewer to look at it from an angle. And so this is the world in 50 to 100 years time when all the icebergs are melted and we're living in a little bubble. Uh, but it's always very playful, so you have this big dome here with sort of the, the foliage and then also these towers are actually shotgun sort of uh, cartridges and then this is, has resin over it and she's made it so the resin has produced all these little bubbles which then ties in quite nicely to the big bubble. Gives them so, like a nice perspective in yeah, terms of exactly. the yeah. size, this might be gargantuan exactly. in yeah. size. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Let's uh, see, check out the rest of the show quickly. Yeah. Maybe we can look at this one from this perspective, I think it's yeah. so easier this, to... Yeah. So this is um, Eleanor May Watson's piece, and so it's a, a three metres by three metres um, monoprint, um, and then it has uh, three individual paintings put on top, and you can sort of 
well, with the, the hard structure of like kind of the Rothko line going across, or you see that sort of horizon element. And then also in the white area in the middle, I kind of make out a little tree, which sort of um, makes me think sort of, I don't know, if it, it being a landscape. Yeah. And for, then if, for me, I almost see cityscapes and yeah. like an old photography type of yeah. way, image. Well, it's, it's a bit like you're on the um, psychiatrist couch. Or exactly, sort of yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so then we have Caroline Liss, sort of um, sculpture here, painting, and then also another work, sort of, sort of the idea of there is that sort of, when you walk past it, it's a play on perspective. And so this is the, probably the most sort of abstract piece in the show, because it literally is saying that sort of like a horizon is just one straight line across. And, uh, but yeah, it's a really successful piece. So this is actually her first ever sculpture. And so she's been pulling her hair out, so we're trying to get it done in time, and so, but she's done an amazing job. So. <laughs> It's really nice to actually have sculpture in a landscape exhibition. So when people consider landscape, it's usually your paintings or your comfortable or something. Yeah. So, and, uh, uh, so here, some one, two wonderful pieces by Sir Darrell Brown. So this is Hand of British Oak. And uh, he's such a craftsman. And it looks bit. like it's uh, some of the pieces are glued together. Uh, yeah, yeah, and there's definitely an interaction between them. So usually he would work with ply, which then has that nice leveled effect. Yeah. Uh, but here you've got the really with the beautiful grain from the oak, and so yeah, it's, it's, it's a little wood, sort of wooden woodland, and uh, and then next to it we have another piece by him. So he spent the whole of the pandemic making these sort of uh, electric pylons, uh, and he, he made so many that his partner had to tell him off and sort of stop filling the living room with them. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> beautifully made, and so he's, he's such a perfectionist that. It's drilled in little magnets to hold each one in place. What is it made out of? Is it like a concrete? Uh, it's, I think it's wood with wood. finish. Oh, that's a nice finish. So, yeah, yeah no, it gives you good. almost this metal. Uh, completely. Well, yeah, that's, that's yeah. I've, I've, I envisioned it being so. And also, when it when it came off the van, they were Very carefully much. lifting it and so on. Um, and so, no, a beautiful piece by sort of Mimi Thompson. And so, so I know. So it really sings when you have the light on it with this glowing sort of cave yeah. and so sort of, yeah, a very very quickly worked oil painting sort of uh, I like how the all the different pieces show different approaches to the horizons yeah. you could horizons within a cave who would yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, so that. you've got still got that repeated line across yeah, sort of, yeah sort of that. and then you've got another one by Darren who we saw up there with the turquoise piece and sort of the beautiful lighthouse it's Joanna Whittle, and so she paints these on antique postcards. Mm. And so it was nice seeing the back, sort of, and she collects these postcards, uh, but sometimes uh, she can't bring herself to destroy them and paint over them. Mm. And so, so she showed me an example of these two little kittens. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, mm. so, yeah. Another piece by Alice and Sue, and another piece by Ben, sort of. Uh, so, yeah, you know, a very quirky world. And, and it's nice here with sort of like the the play on colour here with like these warm pinks going through and then all, all along here is quite architectural so sort of. just the little connections when creating the show really makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, I brought by Mary, from Davis. It's a beautiful woodcut print by uh, Alex oh, Booker. Yeah. Sort of, uh, so he does lots of workshops and teaches people how to print and I like I like lines up a load of sandwiches and sort of <laughs> makes a day of it. <laughs> So this is actually a 2D piece by uh, Darrell Brown, so this is called Rain, 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 and the idea is that you're looking out of a window and it's tipping it down with mm. rain, which is what actually happened on the private view, so some people got soaked. Oh, okay. <laughs> and we were listening going, to going the, here. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. So uh, we were, I was watching the installation upstairs, but I don't remember it being this loud. <laughs> it, was, it was just all the rain hitting the roof. Yeah. <laughs> um, beautiful little sculpture by Adam King. Uh, so yeah, really quirky. And so we had a lovely piece, and then that sort of set next to sort of Jane Ward and Gail Sirius Wolfson's pieces. And sort of Gail's mirrors, sort of Darren's wooden piece, quite nicely. And so one of the colour combinations between all of these really works. So, uh, uh, another piece by Mary, so this is sort of brown balls. Was it, um, is it a continuation of this piece? Uh, yeah, so also, yeah, they're, but they're, they're, the they're, all, they're the same artists, but they're all very different though. So, right, right, but yeah, this, mm -hmm. There's definitely also like a, a natural, yeah, exactly that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're useful. Though. Like the choice of colour, the the movement, sort of like um, it's really something special. So, yeah, and then upstairs is the um, like the highlight of the show. And so oh, yeah, yeah. So there's an installation here by uh, Ian Dawson, 
centre. He literally spent uh, two days installing it. The, the whole video is 17 minutes long. Of the installation? And, yeah, so, yeah, so, right, uh, a few people have made it the whole way through, but yeah, it's definitely worth it. <laughs> Oh, that's what you're talking about, the sound. So you quickly here, this is the room we're in. And so he's used AI technology to turn that window into a moon. What? Yeah. That's insane. Wait, what? Could you explain once again, like, how... So, yeah, he photographed the room, uh -huh. and then inputted it into artificial intelligence software, mm -hmm. which then animates it, and creates this sort of distant world. And then all the sounds you hear, are just uh, warped clicks of the camera which ties into him like using the sort of reference mm. and then these quirky objects you see all around are 3D printed and some are just quite playful or sort of normal things others are like copies of rocks from Mars or mountains and then, uh, yeah. and then below here this big rock with the carnival colours this is a 3D printed exact copy of the oldest known rock that mankind has worked on. Worked on? Yeah, so here you see like the little hole here and then two scratch marks. And you can you imagine them sort of like... Green in the fire or exactly, something. Yeah, yeah. And sort of the fabric underneath it, that's uh, printed uh, surfaces of rocks. Mm. And then you have these kind of like playful faces. And, yeah, and those are really atmospheric. And so talking about abstraction, mm -hmm. abstraction mixed with a uh, technical yeah. uh, approach and yeah, yeah. Uh, exploration, yeah. beautiful. That's yeah, absolutely stunning. So, uh, yeah. and so later on in the video, it gets really animated and picks up and it's kind of like a techno beat. Yeah, and so yeah, it's really cool. I love how it forces you to uh, to kind of appreciate the different aspects of of, mm. of this piece, like. The, the quirkiness, the, the history, uh, yeah. the kind of transcendence of, yeah. the, of the image and uh, the sound, beautiful. It's all, yeah, it all comes together perfectly and also embracing the window with like the crescent. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. No. I've ever put on some, so we have quite a few sort of installations in here, but uh, this is definitely up there, it's one of the best. I love the, the, the crescent you yeah. said, yeah. it's so kind of, uh, I, I can't even describe it, it's mm. like, very inspiring. Yeah, completely, yeah. Uh, it's been amazing, thank you very much. Well, thank you. So, yeah, so it's always a pleasure to sort of uh, get to talk about the show and sort of uh, go through everything that I've been thinking and sort yeah. of... Uh, and, and thank you for sharing it with the thank people that can't make it. Thank you for giving so. this great talk. Great. And <laughs> till when is there the... Uh, so the 10th of July, so sort of of open first days to Sundays, mm -hmm. but you can drop me an email and I'm more than happy to meet anyone here at any point in time. So you've put so much work into these shows that so then you've just got to share it with as many people as possible. Yes, definitely.